Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about a very interesting experiment that the .NET team is running for .NET 9 that can completely change how await async works in C-Sharp. Now, this is building on top of the findings of a previous experiment that the .NET team ran and we're going to talk about that as well, but you can see that Microsoft is trying to play around with the idea of how we've been doing await async and improve it. So in this video, I'm going to show you what the experiment is, what the findings of the previous experiment was, and where we might be heading for .NET 9 or maybe a future .NET version. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let's see what we have here. There's a GitHub issue, by the way, everything will be linked down below if you want to have a look on your own, but there's a GitHub issue with titled .NET 9 Runtime Async Experiment. And we're going to talk about what that is, but before we dive into that, I want to quickly touch on the .NET 8 async experiment that Microsoft was trying out. And it wasn't really an async one directly, but more of something called green threads. So I can go here and you can see there's the results of that green thread experiment where Microsoft tried to introduce a second sort of concurrency model in .NET for non-IO blocking operations that would live next to a wait async. And there were tons of issues with that approach. The idea was that you wouldn't write code that looks like a waitable code or a wait async code. You would write something like this, where this looks like a synchronous call. However, behind the scenes, this would be asynchronous and it wouldn't be blocking the IO. So the approach would be to give you a way to write synchronous code that actually behind the scenes is non-blocking and asynchronous. Now, as you can understand, this would completely change how C-Sharp is written. And also we have to live next to the existing async model because they wouldn't just remove our wait async and replace it with green threads, you'd have both. So what happens if async code calls green threads? What happens when green threads call async code? How about performance? As you can see over here, there was a bit of a degradation in the experiments and so on. There will be a link in the description down below if you wanna take a look at this because the findings were very interesting, but you can see that Microsoft has been playing around with the idea of having a different approach in doing await async. Now, before I go into this issue and start reading what's going on, I wanna show you how await async code is translated and compiled because it's all about that in this specific experiment. So if we go on sharplab.io, as you can see over here, what I have is just a normal class and normal void method. And then I have the lowered C sharp, which is sort of the low level C sharp that the high level one we're writing on the left will be translated into. So if I turn this into an async task method, then what you're going to see on the right hand side is tons of code being generated and all this code is written by the compiler to effectively support the await async model. And as you can see, we have a brand new struct over here. By the way, this is struct if you're release mode, but if you're debug mode, this is class. Then you have an implementation of an interface. You have this method builder. You have the move next iterator pattern. You have all this code generated because this is all done on the C-sharp level with C-sharp related structures. You can basically write await async with raw C-sharp technically without the keyword. Now, there is nothing fundamentally wrong with it, but this came at a time where Microsoft couldn't really touch the runtime of .NET because of the way it shipped. So it had to be done and all the features had to be done in that lowering way. Now that they can change it, you can see that now new features do change the CLR and how it works. So if we go back to that issue, that experiment very much focuses on that. In .NET 8, they tried something about green threads. They learned a lot, but they decided not to move forward with that. So what's coming in .NET 9? Well, in .NET 9, they will try to take what they learn and explore performance and usability improvements on the existing await async threading model. So don't introduce a new one, but see how we can improve the existing one, which I love because it is so confusing still for so many people to have an await async model in C-sharp, even though C-sharp pioneered this model. So many questions still exist. So the background here is from C-sharp and .NET libraries level, there's two threading models, the OS threads, and then the async await and task approach. Then you have concurrent code that can access these models with the thread or the task.run respectively. So in modern C-sharp, we are recommended to be using async and task because dealing with threads can be very, very hard. Now that experiment has its own GitHub repo or GitHub repo branch on the runtime lab repo, which is where Microsoft is trying tons of things that eventually make it into runtime 
or get rejected. So if you want to get a peek into the future, that's what you should be looking at. And as we can see over here, that's the repository and it has tons of work being done on it. Now the documentation page about the design can be found here under runtime handle tasks. Why are they called runtime handle tasks? Well, because Microsoft, what it's trying to do is move away from the compiler generating all that lower C sharp code that doesn't really have any information on the IL code itself or the runtime and move it there. So instead of the state machines being that C sharp concept, all that await is saying is moved into a runtime concept. And in that repo, you can see that if you search for async2, you're going to find plenty of methods using that new async2 keyword, as you can see over here, for example, uh, which, by the way, won't be the one we eventually launch with. It's just there so they can compare the two approaches. Uh, but that's how they're representing this new approach. And there's tons and tons and tons of documentation you can read if you really want to go in depth. This will be more of an introduction to make you aware of this, just in case someone is familiar enough with the concept to go ahead, try it out and also provide feedback. I like to bring these things into your attention, but note that this is happening. Now, Microsoft is taking a look at this from a specific lens, and that is first micro benchmarks. How much does a weight cost? You should know a weight is a pretty expensive keyword, and when you can avoid it, you really should, because that state machine is costly, and you have to go through that iterator pattern behind the scenes to actually move into the completed state. Now, things like nested awaits and how does that affect it? Things like frequent suspension or rare suspensions. Think about compatibility, semantics, cost of switching. In an ideal world, this will all be transparent to you, but I don't know how much of that will be the case. And then, of course, IL size, that inflation of moving that to the IL. What does that mean? Do we get a smaller footprint? Because now we have to lower less C sharp into IL code to achieve the same thing. And then how about cross-gen and native AOT? Because Microsoft is really, really focusing on making native AOT work for .NET in a very small package. Now, in the issue itself, there isn't much of interest, but if you try to play around with it and you have feedback, that's the place where you want to start leaving some comments. But I want to quickly go into the repository itself and see some of the documentation. And you can actually see that Microsoft, let me just make this a bit smaller. Uh, you can see that they've been pretty big on graphs. In fact, the latest commit over here is showing iterations per second of calling async methods. And you can see over here async one, that's the one that already exists in .NET, the lowered version. And then you can see the performance difference that async two would have with a task returning method, the JIT state machine over here, and then the unwinder model. Again, not going to go into too much detail. What you should know is that performance is very much in the forefront of this project. And by everything I've been reading until now, it should be better. So your C sharp should get faster, quote unquote, should because we don't know yet, assuming that this actually makes it and it is optimized because they are still very much in early stages. This issue was raised, I think, all the way in the 10th of November and we have January 2024 now. Now, the biggest goal of this experiment is can the runtime generated async state machine actually be substantially better in performance than the existing model because there's always risk into making a change like this such a fundamental change so what's the risk versus reward here and then the more interesting goal is find out if they can implement a variation of async that async to a second way of doing async basically and that's the way i understand it which has some subtle semantic behavior changes but remains compatible with existing code which is written in the original style so have two await async models or keywords and hopefully they can coexist and call each other and not have a big enough performance implication or break your existing code now there's comments and explanations or approaches on how this might be done but I find it extremely funny that we're still going to have a configure away thing here. This is going to be an attribute this time. And I can't wait for all the Stack Overflow questions on when should I use a configure await attribute this time, not the dot configure await method. Now, this is as far as I want to go with this. I want to leave it here. I'm going to put all the links in the description down below. If you want to go ahead and dive deeper into this, read more and give some feedback to the Microsoft team, because especially if something else is added next to await async, this will be a very, very big change. So Microsoft will definitely need as much feedback as they can get. So check the link in the description, try it out, play around with it, and let them know what you think. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, 
keep coding.